Okay, so today what I want to show you guys how to do is how to get your stamp design when you're at this point and you have it laid out in Photoshop or you might even just have your illustration done. It could be done by hand, it doesn't need to be done digitally. It could be your lovely lino prints that you did with Liz. So you would scan those in and add some type in Photoshop. Now the size is important. I want you to design it up quite large. So if I go into image and image size, you'll see I have this design to 28 centimeters by wide by 20 centimeters high. The resolution is 300 pixels per inch. Now I know a stamp isn't physically that size, but I want you to design the stamp up big so that we can do a nice big print out of, a, of it for your portfolio. And then what we'll do is we, I'm going to show you in this tutorial how to put the dotted line around the outside to make it look like a real stamp and how to scale it down and make a sheet of stamps. So it will be something like, if I come in here, you know, something like this, you know, where you'd have a sheet of stamps all together. So just back into Photoshop here. <clears throat> so you can see I've got all different layers here um, with my type and everything. So I'm happy enough. That's ready to go. I'm just going to save it. File, save. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up to select and all. And then I'm going to go up here and there's an option that's quite handy called edit copy merged. Okay, that stops you from having to flatten your image in Photoshop. So if I go copy merged, okay, so we'll come down into Illustrator here and we'll make a new file. And I'm going to make the document A4. Okay, so if I go in here A4 and I want it landscape. So this option here. Okay, obviously because my stamp is a landscape design. Okay, so let's just zoom out a little bit. Okay, so if I go up to edit and paste. Okay, so there's my design. Now it's actually quite big. So I'm, I'm just going to scale it down a little bit so it can fit better on the page. So that's not too bad. Okay, so what we want to do now is, so there's my design. Um, now we can't really see the edge of it here, but we're going to put a little border around the outside. Um, so what you want to do is on your tools palette here on the left, you can see down the bottom here, um, there is an option, a fill color option. Okay. Now we want that to be set to none. So if we come down here, see this little box here with the red line, if I click on that. Now this um, stroke option here if I click there and sort of bring it forward and I want to double click in there and we want to pick a grey colour. Now I have, see here only web colours, I have those turned on. I just find it easier if I'm picking a grey colour to leave those turned on but you don't have to. So let's go with a lightish grey because this is just a little guide for you, these grey dots so they should be quite light so something like that and we'll click OK. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to my tool here for drawing a rectangle. To get to it easily, if you press M on your keyboard, it should jump to that tool. And I'm going to start up here in the top right of my design, and I'm going to click and drag. And what I want is a border around my design. Okay, that's not bad. So the next thing I want to do is um, on my palette up the top here, so at the very top of the screen, you'll see there's an option here, stroke, stroke panel. If I click that on, I get some options, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to make the stroke weight much bigger. So let's go with, say, 20 point, maybe 20, maybe 10 point. Let's see what that looks like. Okay. The next thing I want to do is where it says cap, I want to have it in the middle option, which is round cap. Then I want to turn on dashed line. Okay, now you'll see it's already started to make a dash line, but I want one that's like round dots. So to get round dots, the first field here where automatically it will probably say 12 points, you put zero in there. The second gap, it says dash, gap, dash. So where it says gap, you want to put in double the amount that's up here. So for me, it's 20. Okay, so what it does is it makes a dotted line. Okay, so that looks good, doesn't it? Okay. So that's it. I'm going to save that. So you would print that out. Let's save this. Um, not in there. Let's save it in. Okay. The other thing is making sure that you have good file management. Um, 
my video lectures. Stamp design. Okay, so I'm going to call it large stamp or something like that. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is I'm going to make it an A4. Oh, sorry. Click. Okay. I'm going to make another A4 sheet. And I'm going to have a whole sheet of stamps on it. Now, instead of making a new document, there's something in Illustrator that's quite handy called artboards. So to get a new artboard, if I go up to Window, and there's an option, a palette here, Artboards. And you'll see this palette here. So <clears throat> you can see Artboard 1. You can actually name that if you want. Let's click onto that. Mm, hello. Okay, doesn't want to be named. Okay, well, well, let's just make another one. If we click down here, there's a little, it looks like a sheet of paper. We'll make a new artboard. Okay, so there we are. And um, we'll just close that down because we don't actually need it anymore. And we'll just move some of these out of the way. Okay, so now I have two sheets here. So the next thing that's really important is I'm going to copy that and make a whole sheet of them over here. So there's an important thing that I'm going to need to do. Um, when I, let me just show you how this works. Hold on. Okay. So if I copy that, so edit, copy, edit, paste. Okay, and let's just move it over here. Okay, so I want to make it smaller. So let's bring it down. Okay, see what's happening here? The dotted line on the outside isn't scaling. It's staying the same size. Okay, so let's just delete all of that. So by default, Illustrator will have something turned off called scale strokes and effects. And we need to turn that on. To do that, if you come over to the left side here where your tools are, and there's a tool called the scale tool. If you double click on that, and it says here, options, scale, strokes, and effects, make sure that's turned on. I always have it turned on automatically. Um, but more than likely the machine you're working on, it won't be turned on. So do that first. Okay. Then what we want to do is go up to your move tool or your selection tool. If you hit V on your keyboard, you'll go to that. Select over your stamp. If you, at this stage then, I would group this. If we go object and group and then copy it. Edit, copy, and then paste, edit, paste. Okay, so when I start to scale this down now, it will, you'll see the dots start to make, get smaller as you scale. Now what we want is, we want, I mean on average a stamp you're talking about, it'll be maybe two centimeters high, something like that. Um, so you can see up the top here, where it's got width and height. So at the moment it's 80 mils or eight centimeters. So we want it to be maybe two, two and a half. So let's put 25 mil in there and hit, oops, yeah, it's not. Let me try this, 25. Okay, so you can see what happened there. Let's go back. I'll turn that off. Let's put 25 mil in and you'll see, okay, it's warped it all out of place. So let's undo, edit, undo scale. If that happens, see this, it looks like a little chain. And if you hover over, it says constrain width and height proportions. If that happens, click on that little chain. And what it will do is you'll see when I put 25 mil in here, it keeps the proportions, it'll change the height. So it's three and a half centimeters high or 35 mil high and 20 or 25, 35 mil wide and 25 mil high. So we'll do, I'll do a test print of that. I think that should be an okay size, but yeah, we'll do a little test print and see. Okay, so let's zoom in on it a little bit. Okay, so that's not bad. <clears throat> At this point, I'm gonna save this file, save. Make sure you keep saving as you go. Um, so what I need to do now is make copies of this. So if I go edit, copy, edit, paste, and I'm going to not worry too much about lining them up because I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so the quick way of doing it, if I select over two of these and I'm on a Mac, so I'm going to hit command C, command V on a PC, it's control C, control V, one, two, three, four, and I'm going to hit command V again. Mm -hmm. How many do I want? We'll go with six. Okay. So I'm just going to select over all of these and I'm going to 
I know they're all kind of wonky and all over the place, but what I'm looking to do is, I'm looking for the space here on the left and the space here on the right to be roughly the, the, the same amount, maybe over a tiny bit, and that the distance here from the top is okay. So now, there's a few options. I want to line these all up at the top and I also want to do something called distributing them properly. Let me just zoom in a little bit more. What distribution does is you can see, let me just bring this over for example. So you can see the space there isn't the same as the space there or the space there. Um, you can see they're not lined up. So the first thing I need to do is select all of these. Okay, And you'll notice some options pop up at the top here. I want to align these all along the top. So to do that, if you look, the icons are quite obvious. Vertical align top. It's the one, two, three, the fourth one in from the left. If I click on that, see the way it now lines them all up? So the next set of options here along the right hand side of these is to do a distributing them. So the one that I'm looking for is <clears throat> this one here, horizontal distribute center. And I'm just gonna click on it and if you look at the images, you'll see what happens. Okay, what it's done is, it's made the space here all exactly the same, okay? So I'm happy with that. I'm going to select all of these, and I'm going to group those together. So I go up to Object and Group. So then I want to go Edit, Copy, Edit, Paste. Okay, so I have a second row of them. Um, and then I'm going to go Edit, Paste. So I've a third row. Now I'm going to make these a little bit kind of off. So you can see I'm going to line these up. So I'm going to keep doing this with keyboard command. So I'm going to hit command V. Maybe one more, command V. Okay, so you can see they're all, they're all off. <clears throat> so I'm going to do the same here. If I select over all of these rows, what I want to do this time is this first option here, horizontal align left, if I click on that, they'll all line up to the left. And what I want to do is distribute them properly across the middle here. So if I click on this one here, vertical distribute center. Okay, so that lines them all up across the center. So that looks pretty good. Let's zoom in on them. Here's my stamp. So I would do a test print of this and just make sure that this this little this small stamp looks like the right size. Um, I would probably tear out one of these and actually put it on an envelope and see does the size look okay. If I need to scale them up or down a little bit, I would know then. So to be able to tear these out as if they're real old-fashioned stamps, if you get um, either an awl or we have in the graphics room etching tools, which we used when we were doing our book binding, if you remember. So you basically, we need to print these out on the nice, the good old fashioned kind of quality paper. And then you basically make a series of holes with your etching tool all the way around here. And then very gently, you have to tear along the little holes and it will look like an old fashioned stamp. So that's pretty much it. I'm gonna save that because I'm happy with that. I'm gonna print those two out on the old fashioned paper, sugar, the white sugar paper that I have. And, um, okay, that's taken ages. So that's pretty much it. If you guys get on with that, I will be very, very happy.